Hello guys, Abel here back with another video. First of all, long time no see. Secondly, probably I'm gonna cut this video in two parts, as in like, don't, don't be very surprised if all of a sudden the camera angle, my t-shirt, my, ha my hairstyle and everything else changes, because I will have to go relatively soon, but I wanna at least get started on this. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about body fat percentage and some diet stuff once again. Oh, by the way, I forgot to do my short plug. My book is out, SSDable slash book. It's on training. It's really good. So I've heard also, actually, this is an important note. I want to say it. Um, a number of people said that they didn't receive the book. You have, okay, two words, spam folder. Unfortunately, it goes there for a lot of people. I'm working on fixing this issue. But yeah, if you bought the book, you got it. Just check your spam folder and it's going to be there. Okay, so very brief plug, interesting one. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about body fat percentages and some diet stuff again, mainly body fat percentage stuff, because this is kind of a unique perspective that I want to offer, because most of the time when we talk about what's a sustainable body fat percentage, what is the ideal body fat percentage, what is it that you should strive for in the long term, usually it comes from people that are in that state at the time that they are going to be kind of praising. So, okay, at the moment I'm at 10% body fat, I just dieted it down, it's super cool, or maybe I have maintained a low body fat percentage for a long time, what is it like to be here? That's great and very interesting, obviously it gives the person credibility who is talking about it, but at the same time it's going to be an inherently biased view of the situation, because if I'm going to be doing the little sacrifices and putting in that little bit of work that is required to stay that lean day in, day out, and I have been doing that for six months, then obviously I'm going to be not saying super, super shitty things about staying at 10% body fat. It's very hard to stay at a low body fat while thinking that you're doing yourself a disservice. And of course, the same thing applies for someone who bulked up and is now at 22% body fat. Obviously, if this is a person who is really committed to fitness, they have some aspirations at least to be leaner. They see all the ripped guys around them. They are probably following people like that on social media. And so they need something to justify it for themselves that they are so non-lean. Not that this needs to be justified. It's totally okay to be at 22% body fat, but someone who is really, really into this, whether they admit it or not, at least subconsciously, they will have some second thoughts. Now, my position right now is a unique one, I think, because... I would say that for the last like two and a half years, I spent a very good chunk of that being fairly lean. I would say that at least like 65% of that, I spent between nine and 12% body fat. And then maybe another 20% I spent between like 12 and 15. So I, I was fairly, fairly lean and only the remaining ones I spent higher than that. Now, a very good chunk of that remaining portion actually came in the recent past. So between October and about now, I actually stayed at higher body fat percentages. And if you go back to some of my previous videos, you will see that like I was a big boy, not that I'm small now, like I'm still not very lean, but um, like my face was pretty huge even. And actually in the winter months now, I stayed at, you know, in, in the mid twenties, really in terms of body fat percentage, like I got really, really chunky, not by accident, not by letting myself go because I just didn't have the discipline. It's because A, I didn't want to have the discipline. Secondly, because I actually did a bulk. Like I really tried to bring up my back. I also tried to bring up my arms. And so, yeah, I was trying to go up to a heavier body weight and a higher body fat percentage, seeing if that's going to help. We will see how much that actually helped when I diet back down. But this is an interesting position for me to be in right now, nevertheless, because after having been so lean for so long, and now recently having been at higher body fat percentages, I think I have a much better ability of comparing the two. Like how do the two actually line up when you look at the various aspects of your life, like gym performance, the flexibility that you get from dieting, various life situations, energy levels, all, all those kinds of things. Obviously, being lean will teach you a lot about how it's like to be lean and how you feel while being lean. But sometimes, just like with many other things in life, you can actually reflect on it much better when you move away from it and you experience the other side of things again. As I said, once you have been doing something for a long time, you kind of forget how it was like to be not doing it. Things that maybe were really, really sucky, you don't perceive them as sucky anymore, which it doesn't necessarily mean that they are not difficulties. It could just mean that you got used to be dealing with the difficulties. Sometimes you're not even getting that much better at 
handling them, you're just simply used to it. But it doesn't mean that when you move away from them, you don't immediately realize that, oh, wow, like that was actually really, really shitty. It's so amazing to be not dealing with that all the time. Actually, that's what they're saying that heroin, for example, is so addictive precisely because of this, that you take it and then you realize that like, oh my God, like this is how much I was suffering every day, all the time without even realizing it because, you know, it's a very powerful painkiller essentially. So it even stops the pain that you're not even aware of because it's just kind of part of your homeostasis. But anyway, that's a different topic for, well, maybe not for a different video, but maybe a different private conversation or something. On the other hand, moving away from something that you've been doing for a long time also gives you some interesting insights because sometimes you think that there are certain things that would be so much better if you could only be in this, you know, fill in the blank, different kind of position. And then you put yourself in that position and then you realize that no, actually those things didn't change at all. I over romanticized that thing, whether that's a higher body fat percentage or being on TRT or having a lot of money, what have you. So yeah, basically that's what I want to talk about a little bit. Like what are these insights that I've gained? I cannot say that it, it's been a revolutionary experience, but I, there are some interesting tidbits I think that you might find beneficial. So the first thing that really got just reinforced to me, I, I've been aware of that for a long time, but it got solidified in my head more than ever, is that most of the negatives of getting lean and then staying lean, and the most of the perceived positives of going up to a higher body fat percentage, most of that not all, but most of that is going to come from the transition period. Okay. So let's just say that right now you are 20% body fat and your goal is to go down all the way down to 10. That's going to be kind of rough by the end of it. And then when you arrive to 10% body fat, the initial period is also going to be quite rough for some people staying at 10% body fat is always going to be really, really hard, but no matter how hard it's going to be, after six months is definitely going to be easier than after six days. Like if you're taking on something difficult, something challenging, it's going to be the hardest in the beginning when that challenge is just kind of freshly thrown upon you. When you've been dealing with that challenge for a long time, it's not nearly as bad because you kind of just accommodate to it. Of course, you also learn some new skills that are going to help you to be dealing with that easier. At the same time, like when you're going up to a higher body fat percentage, yes, like maybe you're like me, you function somewhat better in some aspects, at least when you're up at 20% body fat versus when you're down at 10. Maybe for some of us, it's always going to be the case. It doesn't matter how long we have maintained these body fat percentages, whether it's been six years or six minutes at 20% body fat, some things are just always going to be better than at 10% body fat. However, the difference between 20 and 10, in my case, let's say, and maybe in yours as well, is never going to be as significant after a long time as it would be just right off the gates. So as you're going up towards 20% body fat, if indeed that is your ideal spot, you're going to be feeling better and better. And each step of the way, you might be amazed, like how much better you're feeling like, oh my God, like, and this is getting better and this, and oh my God, like, I, I, I cannot believe this. Then you arrive to 20% body fat. You're still very, very happy with things, but as time passes, yeah, things are fine, but you realize that it's actually not that magical and that the gap is not nearly as big as what you would have expected. That's interesting for a number, number of reasons. For one, it kind of just reinforces the lesson that I think a lot of us had to learn a number of times is that when you are in a given state and you're thinking to yourself that in another state, things would be so much better. We tend to over romanticize that. I run into that by the way, with people that are asking me about TRT, like, do you think I should go on TRT? And then I'm asking why, and then they're giving me reasons like, well, because like often I'm low in confidence and they are even mentioning like social things, like they have social anxiety or whatever. And it's like, what do you think is this NZT or like, what is it going to do? It's, it's a sex hormone. Like some things are going to improve. Some things are probably going to be exactly the same as before. Same exact thing with this. Some things yes, are notably and sort of permanently better at higher body fat percentages versus lower ones for me, but even things where most people would think that that's the thing that is going to like improve the most drastically, like hunger and food focus. Am I less hungry and less food focused at 20% body fat or higher than what I was at 10? Yes. However, it's not the case that I'm never craving something really crappy that I really shouldn't be eating. It's not the case that I'm, I'm never hungry. That's definitely not the case. I still can't even get hangry if I go long enough without food. Can I go longer without food than when I was leaner? Yes, 
but it's kind of a difference that's that's a wash like if that was the only thing i would be getting out of being at a higher body fat percentage i would never do it because it, it's just not a good enough trade-off like what i'm losing in terms of losing the aesthetics side of my physique is just not equal to the amount of benefits that i'm getting for example hunger wise and food focus wise i think that it's a really useful experience to have because first of all it's good to know that when you're thinking that the grass is greener somewhere else very often it's not so much greener secondly it's also good to know that okay you don't need to blame everything on the thing that you're focused on like when you're dieting this is something I'm definitely prone to. I'm seeing this with clients a lot as well. When you're dieting, you tend to think that everything is because of your diet. You slept badly, it has to be because of the diet. Sometimes it is, but not always. You're in a bad mood, it must be because of the calorie deficit. Um, you're stressed out, it has to be because of the calorie deficit. Well, no, very often it's not. And when you realize that, okay, you go up to 20% body fat, you're not at all in a calorie deficit, you might be in a hefty surplus, Still, you will be stressed, you will be sleeping badly sometimes, you will be in a shitty mood sometimes. It's useful to experience this. Brett Pilon actually talks about this in the context of intermittent fasting, that it's very useful for people to go without food and then realize that, okay, a lot of the good and a lot of the bad will happen whether or not you're eating food that day. Especially for me, it's been something that's kind of been in the back of my head for a long time that, man, I'd been for so long always having at least some limitations on myself, like that added degree of responsibility that I always expected of myself in terms of what I eat, when I eat, how much I'm allowing myself to let loose, which, by the way, I think is completely proper. Like, I'm not a five-year-old anymore. I'm an adult. Why wouldn't I be eating responsibly, if anything, for general health? But I always just kind of had it in the back of my head that, man, it must be so awesome for these strong men and powerlifter guys that are not at all concerned about any of this, if it's like a heavyweight powerlifter, of course. If anything, not eating enough is their only concern. So if they want to eat 10 times a day and that be all junk food, they can do it. It would be so cool. And not only just athletes, but even just the people around me. Like, they're so chill around food. Like, they don't have any of these thoughts and, like, managing things and saving up calories. Like, none of this. They are just going about their life and enjoying food in, like, basically with no limitations on themselves. If, if for just a brief period I could try this, like, how must it be? Like, it must be so awesome. Well, this winter I actually tried it. Like, I, I really removed basically all limitations. Because of that, I didn't just stop at 20% body fat, by the way, but went up to like 25 at least. And that's been also very insightful. Like it just wasn't nearly as good as what I expected. Like I expected that it will be like, a, again, a heroin addict who is like, okay, I tried it once, but God damn it, how do I go back from this? Because this is so much better than anything else in life. Well, it wasn't like that at all with this. It's like, first of all, most junk food tastes like crap. So... Yeah, like salads and, and non-starchy veggies. We think of these things as kind of tasteless. Good things that are good for you, but things that are not very enjoyable. Well, okay, sure. Fries and some chicken fingers that you put in the air fryer and or maybe even use oil, whatever. Those are good, but, but they're not that amazing. Like it's actually, it's relatively hard to find foods that are like truly remarkable compared to like healthy foods, quote unquote, that you would be eating on your fitness journey. If you go to some really awesome restaurants or someone can cook really well in your family, you will be having that more often. But just kind of like regular crap that most people eat, it's, it's just not that good. In fact, many times it's very underwhelming. Logistically, it can be convenient. That's another thing I will be talking about later. But honestly, I was kind of amazed by how little I got out of it in terms of enjoyment. And for a long time, I didn't actually, I didn't want to believe that this is so underwhelming. So I, I actually prolonged eating this way for a while because like, man, there must surely be something to this. But no, honestly, it, it really is just that average. That's been very eye-opening because now I really know that I'm just really not missing out on anything. Like it would have been one thing if I find that this is like just so amazing. But no, honestly, for this much extra enjoyment, which... Even the extra enjoyment part is kind of debatable because like even if it was truly that much more amazing, like everything tasted just so much better. I mean, even then you you get used to anything, even the amazing stuff become not so amazing anymore because of, you know, habituation. This way, honestly, it, it, it is just not justifiable to not be in pretty damn good shape all the time. By that, I mean, you know, for guys like, you know, 
in the ballpark of 15% body fat or leaner, there, it, it just cannot be justified. If the reason for that is because life is more enjoyable because you can eat all of those things, man, it's, uh, it, it's just really, really not living up to the promise. Alrighty, so as promised, the camera angle changed a little bit, the lighting changed a little bit. I didn't go to the Bahamas in the meantime, it's just different lighting conditions. But I look better, don't I? Arms are looking bigger, didn't put on an inch, but wearing a different t-shirt. So a couple of things are indeed different. <laughs> so anyway, let's continue. I know, so where I was finishing is that it was really underwhelming just purely from that sensory pleasures slash hedonic reward aspect. And honestly, it, it, it is relatively underwhelming in most aspects when I just compare the day-to-day -day existence. There are some things that were just permanently better, as I said, but a lot of those things just, just weren't like that. For example, a very easy one, gym performance. Does your training output and how heavy you can lift and how strong you are, do all of those things change when you're at a higher body fat percentage? How quickly you recover, that would be another one. When you're going up there, on the way up there, yes, it is quite markedly different. Um, I was stuck at certain weights on certain machine for a long time. For example, on one arm pull downs, my best performance for a long time was something like 55 kilos for five. Well, I went up to maybe 65 kilos for five, which is a huge difference. So it might not seem like a huge difference on one arm pull downs. It is on Romanian deadlifts, my previous best in 2021. And after that, I stopped doing RDLs for a long time, but my very best at the end of that year after doing RDLs every week and taking it very seriously, it was either 165 kilos for six or maybe 170 kilos for six. I'm not too sure, but now I went up to 175 kilos for six and I did 10 reps with 160 kilos, which was really awesome on these cool overs, like this extra range of motion, skull crusher, tricep exercise. My best previously was I think um, maybe 50 kilos for 12 or 45 kilos for 12, but it doesn't matter which one because now I could do once um, 10 reps with 60 kilos. So big, big improvement on these chest supported row machines. Um, I, previously, I've been doing something like 140 kilos for 10. That was my best. Well, now I actually maxed out the machine with plates. So I'm using a slightly different technique as well. So it's not completely comparing like for like, but still like it was like 220 kilos or something for 10 or something like that was my best. So like I gained crazy amounts of strength on some lifts. And the thing is that the, the improvements were like very linear on the way up. Like once I actually kind of stabilized at a certain weight, those improvements really, really started to kind of level out and that is actually something I've experienced in the past. Like when you start eating more, especially if you kept, kept yourself very lean, you're probably a little bit permanently impaired as far as your recovery is concerned. Obviously maintenance calories or maintenance level calories on average, at least, are never as good for recovery management as a calorie surplus is, but it's especially so the case when you're very lean, as you start eating more, you're in a surplus, you're going up in body weight, body fat percentage, and you're constantly in this surplus energy repleted state, then you're going to notice big improvements in your training. But eventually, like when, once you just kind of settle at a higher body fat level, it's just not going to be that amazing. And I would say I didn't get weaker. So I kept a lot of those strength gains that I made on the way up, but it didn't keep improving just because I'm in this fatter state. Another example here would be energy levels and mood. It's often said that you're often lethargic, you're more moody, mood swings, like ups and downs. These things happen a lot more when you're leaner. Well, unfortunately, they happen about just as much now when I'm fatter. So apparently that was not what was missing so far. It's probably some other things like working on myself or things like that. Being hungry and being in a dieted state is definitely not great for energy levels. However, being in a dieted state is not the same as being lean. So that is once again, something we have to keep in mind. A lot of people think of these things interchangeably because unfortunately for a lot of them, 
let's say being at 10% body fat is the same thing as dieting down to 10% body fat and then staying there for a minute and then rebounding and then dieting again. Well, unfortunately that happens a lot, but it's not the same thing as staying at 10% body fat and bringing up calories, being at maintenance and kind of just staying there. So I'm not even sure if my energy levels were any better or are any better now that I'm fatter than when I was leaner. In some aspects, they are worse. My conditioning, cardio conditioning is, is worse. Like I get out of breath more easily. I actually feel like I feel more lethargic more often. After meals, I'm a lot more prone to getting sleepy. I, I just generally feel like an all in all, like in and out from top to bottom, less fit version of myself. That, that is something that I'm not loving at all. I, that is that is actually concerning and it's probably an indication that I'm probably not as healthy as I could be. Um, now, weight loss and fat loss is not the only way to improve on that. Probably I should do more cardio, for example, but I didn't do cardio even when I was leaner and then I didn't feel like this. So those are some negatives. And there are some other negatives, by the way, as well. Like I sweat more, which is not not a very nice thing to say about yourself, but it's true and it's also not nice the fact that it's true but i sweat more when i eat i sweat more when i sleep i sweat more in the gym which is actually like really messed up like people can actually literally tell the exact roads i was walking up and down on in the gym because i'm leaving this nice track after myself gross and these are actually some of the prices that I need need to pay for various pipers. Then we are not even mentioning the aesthetics part. Like in the meantime, of course, I liked the way I looked a lot more when I was there, which is kind of an interesting thing that I totally didn't think I looked as good as now. I can definitely tell how good I looked when I was that lean, um, which is probably the other side of all of this. Now I'm over romanticizing how awesome it must be to be 10% body fat. Like I'm looking at some of my pictures from last summer and I'm thinking, man, it must have been so amazing to wake up in this incredible physique every, every day. It's to look in the mirror must have been such a joy. And I must have walked around with this beaming confidence and every moment of my life must have been recolored by the fact that I looked that good. No, I remember that it wasn't. It's just simply, I'm not there now looking at that and I'm over romanticizing it and over mystifying it. So, you know, no matter which side of the fence you are, you're always going to think that the grass is greener over there. It's just something that got reinforced to me. And now I definitely know that just in the same way as we over romanticize how it must be like to be lean. And the answer is it can be cool in some ways, not so cool in other ways. And the same exact thing is true of being higher in body fat. Now, I will say that a couple of things are so sort of permanently better at this higher body fat percentage. Actually, there are two things that I can think of. One is logistical convenience, which is very easy. How hard do you need to work to arrange the conditions, the environment around you so that you have an easier, smoother time staying in your current condition? Well, the leaner you are, the more difficult all of that is going to get. When you're 10% body fat, you need to be eating pretty satiating foods for the most part. You don't always have access to those really satiating foods. So sometimes you need to kind of get out of your way to make sure that you do have that. Sometimes you can't do that. Then it might involve some stress. Then you need to make sure that that stress that you're under is not going to affect others around you. For example, when you're traveling, like if I'm getting a random request now, for example, like, hey, do you want to go to the weekend house of your in-laws with your wife and then the in-laws and well unfortunately their dog as well but that's kind of another story if now i'm getting a question like that the, the answer is well i guess sure why not because i guess i just have no real reason not to whereas when i was 10 percent body fat that means well okay then i need to make sure that i have enough of the satiating foods there because what they are eating is definitely not satiating and is definitely very high calories. So I don't want to be coming back like, you know, 10 pounds or whatever, three, four kilos heavier. Now I don't have to think about that at all because I can actually just auto regulate my calorie intake even on whatever the cheeses and, and pastries and plenty of alcohol and whatever. It's just really not an issue because it's just not hard for me to stay at this body fat level. Maybe now it's a tiny bit harder than it was, let's say, a couple of kilos ago, you know, 
when you're in, in the mid 20s in terms of body fat percentage, you don't need to pay attention to any of that stuff. Like you can just eat when your family is eating, eat what they are eating and you will be good to go. If you're going and working out a couple of times a week and you get at least like 5,000 steps a day, probably even less, you will not be gaining body fat unless you're purposefully trying to still gain weight. You know, for the most part, of course, there are some people with higher settling points for them. It might be a bit more di difficult. That is definitely an upside of being heavier, being softer and definitely a cool thing. And is definitely a thing that when you are going back down to a lower body fat percentage, you need to get used to that other way of being once again. Living a comfortable and very stress-free life is something that is very easy to get used to. There's definitely no hard transition period to a more comfortable life. Going back to a slightly less comfortable way of living is something that you will have to get used to once again. And I'm curious how it's going to go for me if that's what I decide to do. Because I've been not in that state for a while now and you know, over the years, I've gotten very nicely accustomed to always putting in that extra bit of thought and not getting stressed out by it. Like I learned how to manage all of that. And boy, was it easy to get used to the polar opposite of that. Well, you know, no wonder it's very, very comfortable, very stress free. So that is an upside. And I guess this is just something to accept and acknowledge. Being leaner is always going to be in some ways more effortful than being fatter because our world is just very nicely accommodating to being fatter. Another thing that is uh, permanently, I wouldn't say better necessarily, but definitely enhanced at a higher body fat percentage is sex drive. Luckily I can be 10% body fat and I still have like very healthy sex drive, but it's, it's nothing remarkable. There, there would be never stories about me that like, Oh yeah. Like when I was dating that guy, like, like, Oh my God, like he's a maniac. Um, when I'm at a higher body fat percentage, there could be because, because it's actually, it's actually kind of crazy. The contrast between the two, I say it's not even necessarily better because it, it's actually annoying. I'm actually up for sex a lot more than my wife would be. And it, 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 it's not a particularly pleasant thing. So, um, not necessarily better, but enhanced. So, I mean, I don't know, I guess if you work in the porn industry, you might want to consider going up to a higher body fat percentage ask the producers to shoot the scenes with you with a shirt on. Yeah, I mean, there are all kinds of weird genres, so I'm sure it's not going to be a problem. Another thing that I noticed, and this is not something that has to be the case, but the potential is definitely there, is that being at a higher body fat percentage and probably the higher that is, the worse this gets, it has a way of locking you into shitty food choices. And what I mean by that is the fatter you are or the higher your body fat percentage is, the less hungry you will be. And the more intense, the more stimulating the tastes of your food will need to be in order for you to be interested in eating. And so, you know, an easy example, like broccoli and chicken breast is never going to cut it for you when you're at the very high end of your body fat settling range or even above that, which is where I was now. I was definitely not eating any sort of bland foods. And eventually it got to the point where even like a bowl of pasta with some cheese on top or something, could not get me interested. And I was always looking for these very intense tastes, Well, those are also pretty high calories. So it was almost like this self reinforcing loop of like, well, what do I enjoy eating these things? Well, these things are very high calorie. It's really hard to even maintain my weight while I'm eating all of this. So this is a problem because if anything, that's not particularly healthy to be eating that way all the time. And secondly, it's really hard to then move out of this. So if you want to go down to a leaner state, I mean, it's really tough because you are so used to be eating these things that when you start eating veggies and things like that, unless you're a really good cook or a patient cook, at least, which often I'm not, then you're just going to be like, man, like I just cannot, cannot get myself to eat this and to say no to all of that. Even if you, I, I said, I know what I said. I found all of that underwhelming. It wasn't as amazing, but I mean, it's still better than like a plain salad with like, not much magic to it. So like, at least you need to be able to prepare that very nicely. I often don't have the patience for that. So plus, you know, and even if I had the patience for that, it's more effort. God damn it. I, I just got used to eating this thing that I just like toss into the microwave or into the air fryer for five minutes. It's ready. Zero thinking, zero cooking skills, much less dish cleaning afterwards. So it's convenient and it's pretty tasty. So man, 
and it's not summer anyway, let's just keep on with this. So actually I stayed in this federal state for way longer than probably I should have, simply because I got used to the convenience aspect of all of this. And also I desensitized my taste buds to a decent extent. Also, and this is kind of really messed up, is it actually being at a fatter state makes you, or made me at least, lose some perspective, which I worked really hard to be gaining that perspective in the first place. Like it took a lot of experience, seeing a lot of things, experiencing a lot of things on myself. And I lost a lot of that. What is that perspective? Is the perspective of how much fat are you actually putting on? How much fatter did you actually get? Secondly, how much time, how much dieting, how much effort it's actually going to take to lose all of that eventually. I was very nicely in tune with my body that way. And of course, it's a lot easier to have that when you are 10% body fat because 10% body fat versus nine or 10 versus 11, whether or not that's actually 10% or you know plus or minus 1%, you know how lean you are. And you also notice when you're even a percent below that or a percent above that. When you're 22%, I mean 23% as opposed to 22 or 21% as opposed to 22, that's really hard to notice. And I started losing perspective. Now as I'm getting leaner, I'm very, very quickly regaining it. And I'm also just really becoming aware of how much fat I really put on. It was pretty evident that it was not one or two kilos, but now I'm seeing it that, man, did I really need that extra serving of whatever chocolate cake on December 27? and 31 and then on january 18 and then march 12 no probably i didn't need it i would have a lot easier time returning to a leanness level that i'm satisfied with for the long term what's even more messed up actually is that i'm pretty sure that i developed some sort of positive body dysmorphia so yeah for the first time ever i started getting comments from my in-laws you know my wife's family these people that always considered me skinny they started making fun of me like, hey, like, um, I can see that you were well fed and stuff. And I was like, what the hell? But I'm not fat. I look freaking kick ass. And um, looking back, I mean, it's, it's actually kind of crazy how freaking huge I got. <laughs> but yeah, somehow I just didn't realize it on the way up. I was thinking that I'm totally rocking it and I'm the hotshot of whatever, of the world. Well, apparently I wasn't. So yeah, I guess oddly enough, when you go to your own personal extremes, it can have some interesting effects. I mean, for some people, it ruins their self-esteem. For some of them, it somehow just morphs it and they see themselves a bit overly positively. Probably would have been better if I actually didn't see myself that way. In this case, somehow that was the case. On the other hand, it is actually nice to see, which everybody says, but I'm not sure how much anybody really means this, but now I could actually see it on my own skin that it is really true that boring these extremes, when I got really freaking huge. But I mean, even then, it's not like anybody seemed upset by it or anybody seemed repelled by me or something. I got a couple of teasing comments, but that, that's about it. And probably even that is simply because they know me and they know how neurotic I am otherwise. So it was just funny for them to see that this guy got to this point. But other than that, it was really reinforced once again that people really like just do not care. It, I honestly can tell you that I noticed absolutely zero difference in how people looked at me, how much my wife was, for example, sexually attracted to me. And like, we are sexually active. So it's not, not one of those things where like, well, I didn't notice a difference. Like it was zero now and zero before. No, no change. How many looks I've gotten from other women, no change. Plus like, you know, being big and maybe not as aesthetic with your shirt off, again, has relatively little consequences in the winter because you're covered up. So even in a t-shirt like this, I would not be going out or something. I'm going to wear something long sleeve. So people cannot really see you that much unless you're wearing something super tight, which I never do. It actually looks pretty good. I think it sort of treats aesthetics pretty well. I actually planned on doing a video on this. Maybe I'm going to do it in the future, like the ideal body composition for different goals, like what I think it is if you want to look good for women, for example, versus your gym buddies <laughs> versus two people on a pool party, it is actually different. Which muscles you should be focusing on is a little bit different. How lean it's good to stay is also a bit different. And I think on, on that regard, so if I'm just looking at aesthetics, well, the aesthetics that other people actually got to see, I think this higher body fat percentage was actually really good for the winter. Now, um, as hopefully eventually the weather will warm up and it's not going to be raining all the time like it has been now, it probably is not going to be so great. But 
nice reinforcer once again, that cliche that everybody says that people don't care, women don't care. It is really true. But all in all, honestly, if I had to summarize this, I would say that the dominant phrase that's in my head about this is diminishing returns or diminishing effects rather. On the way down, there are downsides of getting lean. But once you actually stay there, they are not nearly as big as what most people would think or what even I would have thought before or even when I was there, I thought that some of those downsides that I'm incurring are way bigger than what they actually seem like looking back. And you know, from that it follows that the upsides of getting up to a higher body fat percentage, what I was hoping for when I was leaner, they're not nearly that amazing. And of course, this all assuming that you're staying within a reasonable range. So I don't think that, you know, at 7% body fat, there is not like any state other than that, that would not be better. And I don't mean 6%, right? Like you should be getting a bit fatter than that and you're going to see market changes. And just like with anything, like there are huge leaps in, in your well-being, your energy levels, when you're going from a really unsustainably lean level to a more sustainable level. But going from a sustainable level to an even more kind of idealized point, diminishing returns. And those are like kicking in stronger and stronger. And eventually you're not even noticing the difference. Where that is for me or like where are my sweet spots now having been at both spots? Honestly, I would say that anything between this where I am now and all the way down maybe like 12%, it's, it's very comparable. Do I, now, do I feel better at 15% than at 12? Yes, a little bit, yes. At 17% versus 15, maybe a little bit still, but that's hard to even distinguish in between. So I would say that still keep in mind what's sustainable for you, but just be aware that you know if you're at X body fat percentage and everything sucks, the point at which you might start feeling better might actually be very close. Like you don't need to go to the polar opposite extreme, most likely. Or even if you do, it might just have to be for a temporary period. But if currently, you know what, you're at X body fat percentage, then X plus two body fat percentage might already cut it. At least be willing to kind of count with that possibility. So what is the conclusion? Everything that I've said so far about you know, don't obsess over being lean and uh, this whole obsession of the internet fitness world with leanness is ruining people. Is that all bullshit? And I'm gonna be all about leanness once again. No, not at all. But for myself, like I had to come to the conclusion that actually last summer, the way I was living, it was actually almost perfect. Because honestly, I was enjoying myself. I was going out regularly. I was not super, super strict with my diet. Like I, I drank when I was going out a healthy amount. Um, and I was at a very nice aesthetic kind of body fat percentage. And the, the freaky thing is, is that actually the way I am living now. So again, now I'm like probably just under 20%. The way I'm living now, uh, maybe not, not even under, maybe 20%. I actually could be maintaining that level that I had last summer with my current lifestyle. It's not enough, however, to get there. So that's the sucky part. Like in order to get there once again, that's considerably trickier. I know I'm going to do it. Like, unfortunately at this, I have gotten very good over the years. I wish I've gotten as good as this in other disciplines as well. I'm a very skilled fat loss, sir, I guess. So I'm going to do it, but it's going to take a lot more effort, but I really could maintain that body comp with this current lifestyle. And that's, that is kind of a scary realization that that that's sort of the price you pay like you let go of your leaner physique and you go up well you're letting go of a huge privilege that you have and that is that it's actually pretty easy to hold on to that you can be very flexible um, it takes some experience but it can be done then to get back there that's once again a trickier thing i don't think it was a bad decision to get up to this body fat level because honestly just like with anything else i got bored by what i was doing i was lean for a long time I stopped appreciating it. I stopped finding it particularly exciting and I wanted to do something else. So I decided to bulk up, which by the way, I think was a good decision. I overdid it a little bit, no harm done. Luckily, I will go back down to a leaner state, maybe not quite as lean. We will see, but it's an important lesson. I actually got to see how it's like to be at this higher body fat percentage and to even let go of all restrictions. It's something, it's just not that amazing, you know? 
So sometimes you really need to do kind of the polar opposite of what you've been doing up until that point to really be able to reflect on it more accurately. Now I have that and this is my insight for you today. Being at a higher body fat percentage will make life a bit easier. And for some of you, that might be such a drastic improvement that it's worth trading off the aesthetics part and the ambitions you have on that front. But it might not be as much of a remarkable improvement as you might think. So if you think that, unfortunately, you need to choose between well-being and then looking leaner, not really the case. You've got to find that kind of reasonable range for yourself. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody. Being considerably under your body fat settling range is not going to work, but otherwise you can still have a very functional and enjoyable lifestyle while being kind of at the lower end of that settling range. So I guess that would be my message for today. I think my camera is going to run out of storage in any moment. So I'm going to wrap this up here. Uh, that's my kind of return video. I'm going to get a lot more regular with uploads once again. Hopefully I managed to deliver some insight and uh, otherwise uh, just once again, my book about training and how to put together awesome training splits, how I do it, how I do it for my clients is out and you can find it on my website at ssdable.com slash book. And yeah, I hope that a lot of you will pick it up and you will enjoy it. If you buy it, then just know that it goes in your spam folder perhaps. So make sure to check that. And, uh, I'm working that out in the meantime, of course, still. And fuck, my camera is really gonna die. So thank you for your attention. See you next time.